Goalies, it's Kirk from Warrior Goalie. I'm here with Carson and Aiden, and in this video, we're gonna talk about everything you need to know about the G7 leg pads. So first thing you guys would wanna know about this pad is how stiff is it? This is a one-piece core pad, so it means that there's no internal break, but there is a, meet, we would rate this a medium flex below the knee with a stiffer thigh rise. That stiffer thigh rise is gonna be great for stopping power, making sure if you do miss the puck with your stick, that the stopping power of the thigh rise is gonna hold so pucks don't squeak through. The next thing really about the shaping and the flex of the pad is it does have one external break, one outer roll break. We put that below the knee so that you can get some flex and some shaping to the pad, um, but it's still gonna have that stable thigh rise up here. So you'll see that this pad will curve more as you get above the knee. On the back of the pad, starting from the top, a really key component to leg pad performance is the knee stability. And so we have this feature, we call it the knee drive system, where the back of the pad moves out and then the knee block integrates towards the knee drive system. And this is the first time on a Warrior pad where we've used a piece of what we call Hypercomp. It's our composite plastic material. And it goes from the knee block into the knee drive system. So it's a very, very stable knee block connection. So it's gonna get you in the butterfly quicker. And when you're in the butterfly, a much more stable slide in the butterfly too. Uh, a very obvious thing as we're talking about this is the slide plate. We started with the slide plate on the G6. It's here on the G7. It's a removable feature. So if you find today or on the ice, it's too fast for you, you can simply take it off by taking these top straps and this bottom strap on the knee block, and then it removes. I advise goalies, you know, if you haven't used it before, definitely give it a try. If you got a big game coming up or if you're jumping up in a bigger pad, maybe take this piece off, add the slide in later, and get used to the pad first, because it is really, really fast. Um, Around the knee, you have an outer knee wing that's removable. Uh, you can take it off if you'd like to uh, strap down to the calf, or if you want it tighter, there's two tabs in here. You can move this piece inward and get an even more uh, connected feel from strapping around your knee. The top calf strap, this is a neoprene sling wrap. It's adjustable in tension. It's also removable. Another key thing here, if you do strap down to the calf, is notice that this is loop Velcro. So you don't have to choose to run these straps side by side or crisscross them. You can put this piece exactly where you want it to get that feel and that lock behind your calf and then take this strap and run it exactly where you want it to and run them on top of each other. So that's a really nice update there is you can have the same connection point. You don't have to mix and match or crisscross. The outer calf wrap on the G7 is uh, softer foams and it's got more uh, contour break to it. So this will really wrap to your leg nicely. You get good control from that. Uh, we've also shortened it slightly, moving these pieces a little bit shorter and extending them, instead of extending them down towards the toe of the pad, gives your skate more room to move as you're recovering, moving off the post um, and different types of skates now. Uh, you don't want these pieces to get caught on your skate. So it helps to kind of keep them out of the way and keep them secure to your leg for the, the pad control that you want. When I open the pad up, you'll see there's this new calf wedge here. This is a great piece for stabilizing your leg in the pad, uh, connected feel to the pad. You guys both have it on right now. Do you feel like it's connected? Do you feel like it's comfortable? What's, what's the first word that comes to mind? It's really comfortable and it doesn't bother me at all doesn't bother you. I feel really connected and I feel like I can still move really well. So another piece of the connection of our pad in this area is the contoured shin cradle. This contoured shin cradle is great because it gives you connection at the boot, the shin, and the knee. If we were to remove this part, you'd only feel the pad really in two areas. You'd feel it down here or right here. And the result of that is the pad can feel top heavy or it can feel bottom heavy. The nice thing with the contoured shin cradle, you feel it against your leg and it and it helps to keep you connected in all three spots. You get, if a puck hits here, you feel it. If it hits here, you feel it. And if it hits down in your boot, you feel that too. The other benefit, it's a subtle one, but you'll feel it once you get on the ice, is you get a faster rebound because of this piece too, because now your leg is up here and it's bracing the core of the pad. So a puck hits here, there, there's an instant energy transfer because you, the weight of your leg is there to brace the core. If you didn't have that piece, you kind of have that like, pillowing effect where it can slow a rebound down. 
So this gives you great connectivity, not only on the front of the leg, but as we were talking about that new calf wedge here, it is a removable calf wedge too. So if you, if you wanna just have more space in here, you can take it out. Uh, and another thing too, being removable, it's also adjustable. So you, if you do have a different type of skate and you don't want it to get caught on things, you can shift it up slightly. Or if you wear a bigger, bulkier knee pad, you can shift this piece down. Some goalies might find too, just they wanna feel more support up by their knee. That's great. If you wanna feel more support down by your ankle, you can shift this piece down to get that too. I'll take it out just for a second to show you the options that you're gonna get on the G7 leg pad. So the stock settings are gonna run through these two openings here. These are kind of the mid setting. You can go tighter at the calf, you can go tighter at the top calf, or you can pull these straps out completely and run them around and really have more space to, to go around the leg. You can do the same with the top calf strap here. And you'll see both of these are attached with slit clips, which is the same type of attachment method as the heel strap and the toe strap. So there's three different options if you wanna go tighter, uh, the mid setting, which is stock, or looser. So if you wanna change the tension here so that if you want this really tight, you don't have to wear the strap like this to where the Velcro is hanging off. You just make the strap tighter, uh, shorter, and then you can still land it on a nice spot there. So put the cap wedge back in, close the pad up, and then just move down to the ankle. The flexibility of a ritual pad, a G7 pad, we call this our full hinge method. So if you feel back here, I don't know if you guys can feel it reach down, there's no foam in the ankle area. What that does is it gives this pad on day one reverse toe flare. So a lot of goalies look at boot flex and they take it and they flex it this way. And there is some flexibility that you wanna have when you put the pad up against the post. But having reverse toe flare is also really important. So you can, if you're reaching out for that backdoor save, you wanna be able to flex the toe backwards and get this extra coverage, like gaining even almost an extra inch of coverage to make that toe save is huge. Um, and you'll feel it when you get on the ice. It takes a lot of the pressure and stress off your ankles, your knees, just having a full range of motion from the flex of the boot, not just forward flex. Um, and then moving down, the final things, really the straps and what you wear today, whether it's a warrior pad or a different pad, you can do that same thing on this pad. So we have our ARS heel strap and our ARS toe strap. These are identical to one another, so you can adjust the tension by moving these pieces. If you were to pull this strap out this way, you can do the same thing to make this tighter or looser on day one. It's great because in month six, seven, eight, nine, if you feel like the straps are getting a little soft, you can pull it out and you can tighten it and regain that elasticity. Or if you don't use a heel strap, take this off and now you have a backup toe strap in your bag. Um, so that's a great feature as well. This ARS toe strap, what's really key about ours is that you have that elastic strap that will allow your skate to get down and move freely. But what's key is that when you get back up, this will recenter the pad back to your skate. So when you get back up, the pad will recenter on your leg and you can keep moving. You go to your post, you go to the follow-up, to the rebound, whatever it might be. You don't have to get up and kind of push the pad back into place. You don't, it's those micro adjustments. You might not even notice how much you do it until you don't have to do it. Uh, but it's a really great benefit from the ARS toe strap is not just the, the flexibility and the connection that most elastic straps will give you. It's the fact that it will recenter to the pad. Um, that's a great feature there. Toe box is there for goalies who do want to use a skate lace or anything aftermarket. Uh, you can simply take this first lace out and now you have two holes there to run that strap through. Or again, if you're going to use the ARS toe strap, just take this piece off and it really opens up this area so that you don't have this kind of bump in the way of getting up against your post in like a reverse VH or something like that. Lastly, I'll touch on uh, sliding and coverage plus. Um, sliding on the G7, the entirety of this sliding surface, this inner gusset from the top of the thigh rise to the toe, we reinforce with HD foam. HD foam is super critical for the slideability of the pad as you get out in the ice, but maintaining that slideability, having a strong contact to the ice, a smooth contact so that those foams don't compress and slow down as the pad gets wet and, and worn over the course of a season or two seasons. 
uh, is really key for the slideability. Coupled with that, that knee drive system, the hyper comp reinforcement we talked about earlier in the slide plate, this is the best recipe we have found for a ritual sliding pad. You notice we have no bindings up here, no bindings down here that can get wear and tear and absorb water into the pad. It's super smooth, it's super fast, uh, and it's very consistent is the key for slideability. The last thing is Coverage Plus. So Coverage Plus is a design philosophy. It's a technology that we put into all of our equipment, uh, pads, glove, blocker, that brings the face of the gear forward. So if we're looking at this pad here, if we didn't have this outer roll sticking out as far as it is right now, you bring this back and when the pad's in the butterfly, pucks coming in would just miss the pad if this isn't pushed out forward, right? It's the same way that you guys play in the net. You cut the angle down, you move out, box control, all these different types of things and you're positioning to maximize your coverage. So we raise the face of the outer roll on the pad so that it helps to cut the puck off. So that pucks that would just miss the pad if you don't have an outer roll. And if you feel it too, you feel it's stiff foam. So you wanna make sure if it's gonna be there, it's gotta have the stopping power too. You're facing heavy shots. You don't want it to be able to compress the foam and still move over. It's really stiff foam so that it keeps the pucks from skipping over your pad and going into the net. One of the things that we've gone through in the different versions of our pad is with that gap, that raised outer roll, you create a gap in here. So if you happen to be uh, on a wraparound or if you do like to put your boot in the post for a reverse VH, this raised face helps to close this little gap off so pucks can't squeak through this area. Because this is what's touching your post, you still want the face of the pad to come forward so that pucks can't squeak through there. So if you do happen to have your boot in the post, you're still covered there. So that's Coverage Plus. That's the core of the pad. It's, it's really a stable pad. It's got some flex to it now with this outer roll break, but the core is really built well for, to be at least a two-year pad for a lot of goalies playing high-level hockey, skating frequently. Uh, if you're playing less frequently, you're gonna get even more time out of it. So it's a great pad. Uh, stability, lightweight, easy to put on. That's everything you need to know about the G7 leg pad.